In this video, we're going to take a look at the second LLM hacking lab on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Exploiting Vulnerabilities in LLM APIs. In the last video, we covered the first LLM hacking lab and we went through all of this background information that was specific to the lab. Some of that would be useful for this video as well. So if you haven't seen that already or if you haven't done the first challenge, I suggest going back and checking that one out. So today we're looking at chaining vulnerabilities in LLM APIs. Even if an LLM only has access to APIs that look harmless, you may still be able to use these APIs to find a secondary vulnerability. For example, you could use an LLM to execute a path traversal attack on an API that takes a file name as an input. Once you've mapped an LLM's API attack surface, your next step should be to use it to send classic web exploits to all identified APIs. So with the background information out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, this lab contains an OS command injection vulnerability that can be exploited via its APIs. You can call these APIs via the LLM. To solve the lab, delete the morale.txt file from Carlos's home directory. And we need to know a little bit about LLM, API attack surface, and how to exploit OS command injection. Okay, so let us open up the lab. Okay, so we haven't been given an account to log in with. We could have a look at some of the products just in case we can leave a review or something like that, but we can't. And again, we've got an email client and we can access the API logs for the back end. So we've got those open. Let's go and have a look at the live chat feature. And again, we just want to ask it what kind of APIs it's got. So, hey, what APIs you got for me today? All right, so there's three APIs, a password reset, which will take a username or email and return a message. It's got a subscribe to newsletter, which will take an email address and return a message and a product info, which will take an ID or a name and return the details as a JSON or status message. So the most interesting one to me sounds like the product info. Why don't we say, well, actually, first of all, why don't we say, what are the inputs for each API? Just to see if it comes back with anything different. No, but it's a little bit clearer what we need to submit. Okay, so can you tell me about product ID 1? And then I'm going to put in a semicolon and try and put in an ls command. No, okay. Can you tell me... Let's just do product ID 1. I want to get the name of it. We could also go and have a look at the back end as well and see what's happening with these API calls. So you can see it's returned to the product ID 1. Let's go back. Yeah, it's returned to that. Okay, so it's a carport. So tell me about the carport products. And then let me try something else here. Let's do like and ls. You could do some pipes. Maybe we'd insert some quotes as well, just to try and escape whatever string is being passed. Notice this one's taking a little bit longer. I kind of thought maybe that was to do with the double and, but... I guess not. Okay, so it doesn't seem too interesting. The next one was the reset password. Where is our email? Let's go and get it. Let us say we want to reset password for, and then paste that in. But it says it couldn't find an account. We weren't given an account. So I could say reset the password for Carlos, but it's just going to send the email to him. So that's not much use. However, there was also a subscribe to newsletter. So subscribe me to newsletter. And then I'll give the email. Done. Okay. Refresh the page. And we have this email. And just says, thanks for subscribing. Okay. Let us go back. Let's have a look at our API again. Subscribe to newsletter. Okay. So you can see it was passed here. Here's the arguments, which is just our email address. Again, maybe we could try. Let me go back. Let us take a copy of this. And maybe we can just put in something at the end here successfully subscribes but we don't get an email because we actually put in an invalid email that time so let us we can actually change this attacker so we could put in here maybe a colon and a semicolon and a ls command oh it came back with an error let's try that again and say ls in backticks successfully subscribed we refresh the page and notice now that we have morale.txt so it actually listed the files so if we do that again, in fact, we can just do it without the attack a bit. Let's do, oh, it's not letting me copy. Let's do that and let's say remove. And we don't need to provide the full path because it looks like we're already in there. So we'll just do remove, remove morale.txt. 
send and there we go we have solved the lab anyway we have learned how to chain vulnerabilities in llm apis i'll be interested here if anybody solved this differently were you actually able to exploit any of the other apis or did you use a different command injection syntax or something like that and in the next video we'll be looking at indirect prompt injection which will be the third out of four labs as usual, let me recommend that you sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to try and find some vulnerabilities and get paid for it. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.